After a mathematical model has been built around your plant, you can perform a simulation study. The purpose of the simulation study is to pinpoint specific points on a specific equipment pieces on the plant where the operation might not be efficient or where the product from this equipment piece um, is not within the um, correct bounds. Now, you don't need to build a mathematical model first if you don't have a existing plant. So if you are doing a greenfield study, you can use the default model parameters that is available in the software. In this case, a mathematical model has been built around the full plant. So if I click on an equipment piece, I will see that there is a calibration constant section filled with the result of my mathematical model building exercise in the previous step. If I'm doing a design study, I can click on the default constants, which will then fill um, these numbers with default numbers. The default numbers is basically the average of the industry um, and is within reasonable bounds of how you expect the equipment piece to behave. Now for each equipment piece, we will have different sections. They are the operating variables. These are the things that um, the metallurgists on the plant can change um, on a daily or a weekly or a monthly basis. Um, we have the water addition, the ore properties and the calibration constants. Now I'm not going to discuss each equipment piece in detail because there will be further videos explaining each equipment piece um, in detail. But as an example of the SAGMIL, we can simulate different discharge grade dimensions. We can see what happens if we change our operating variables. And we can also see what happens if we change the hardness of our ore. Now for the hardness of the ore, we don't require a specific test. We can um, effectively simulate the hardness of the ore in the SAGMIL by changing numbers from a 0 to 100 scale. A full explanation of how we do this will be available in a different video. So if we want to simulate a harder ore, we can change these numbers and simulate the harder ore. Um, on the feed belt, we can see what will happen if we run at a higher throughput and perhaps a finer feed ore on the feed belt. So what I am effectively doing on this page is setting a specific scenario for uh, operation. Now this could be a operational scenario that you expect in the near future or this can be a plan for a future operation along the uh, line of operation. If we look at the SAGMIL operation um, we can choose between different models um, but we can also change the operating variables so the vortex finder or the spigot size or the number of cyclones that we're operating with. Uh, if I check the ball mill, um, I can see again the calibration constant results from the previous step and here I can simulate with different ball load uh, the speed is usually fixed for a ball mill and you can see what happens if you run with a different ball size. Also, if you have a harder or softer ore, you can change the bond work index here. Now, after each equipment piece is checked, we can do a simulation. So we start the simulation by pressing on the simulate button. 
After a few seconds, the results become available. And here we say that if we have a red icon, we expect problems with that equipment piece. And if it is blue, it is good operation. So what this does is this effectively draws the user's eye to a problem area immediately. So the user does not have to study all of the results in order to um, interpret it and find potential problems. So if I click on the SAGMOL here, you can see that I have my full size distribution result as well as my power draw, my total filling and the slurry filling value. So the slurry filling value is red, which tells us that we have a problem here. Now, when we have a problem, um, the software automatically gives advice. Now, this is the advice that expert consultants would give to you in an optimization study. So here it says that slurry pooling will occur at these conditions. Um, you will have less effective grinding and then it gives reasons for um, this problem. So we can consider changing the mill speed or the throughput in order to solve this problem or we can change the grade dimensions. If we check the next section, the ball mill, we can see here that our ball mill power has turned red and the predicted mill power is higher than the installed motor power, um, operation is not possible. If I check the cyclone, um, here very interestingly we can see that our recirculating load has turned red and the advice has turned red as well. So we have some big problems in this um, cyclone at the moment. So here it's saying that the recirculating load is lower than 200%. This is not typical for this type of circuit. Um, and we can fix this by increasing the apex or reducing the vortex finder diameter. It also says that there is a risk of roping conditions on the underflow. Um, and the options to solve this problem is also given. Now the purpose of simulations are to do trial and error exercises. So now we have identified potential problem spots in the circuit. Now all these trouble spots will cost you um, performance of the circuit. So your throughput will drop, you will have inefficient energy usage or your product size will not be in the correct size range. Okay. So what you ultimately want to end up with is a situation where every equipment piece is turned blue. Now in this short video there is not enough time to talk about each equipment piece in detail but there will be other videos explaining the, the inputs and the outputs of each equipment piece which might be worth watching. You can also see a summary of your results. These are the performance indicators. So you can basically predict your metallurgical accounting for a different in point in time. You can also see the stream results, the tables, as well as the graphs. So here we can see the size distribution of selected streams.